Happy Easter! Alleluia! Jesus is risen! Yes, still Easter, still celebrating Easter. Now, in the year 2000, Pope John Paul II, now Saint John Paul II, declared the second Sunday of Easter to be Divine Mercy Sunday. How appropriate during the octave of Easter that we take a moment to focus on mercy. As we remembered and celebrated the wonderful acts of love by Jesus dying on the cross and rising for us, now we look back and realize that all this was one big act of God's mercy. Why do we need mercy? Well, here's the bad news. St. Paul makes it clear. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's Romans chapter 3. Now, the youth catechism, UCAT number 337, tells us sin cannot exist in the presence of God. Therefore, by our sins, we are locked out of heaven. In justice, we break the law, we deserve to be punished. I think in a particular way this year, we can understand the feeling of being locked out. Just another way this crisis is teaching us. Because of sin, we can't make it to heaven, no matter what we do. If that was the end of the story, it would be like the great ancient tragedies. But that is not the end of the story. And here's the good news. The UCAT number 337 goes on. In his love, God found a way by which he destroys sin and saves the sinner. We could not do this by ourselves, for a man cannot forgive his own sins and rescue himself from death. For us to be saved, God has to act on our behalf out of mercy, not because we deserve or merit it, it is because God himself is love that he decided to save his children. God desires all to be saved, we learn from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy, chapter 2. God gives us mercy, not because of what we have done, but because of who he is. Some think that God is like an old man with a long gray beard sitting on his mountain and does not care at all about us down here. But that's not the God whom Jesus revealed. In Luke chapter 15, the prodigal son story, which I'm sure you know well, Jesus teaches us definitively that the Father is all merciful and he accepts the sinner back unconditionally and even celebrates when he repents and comes home. Jesus also reveals that he comes especially close to the poor and the lowly and those who seek his mercy. God uses the sacraments as one way to show us mercy. Baptism. In baptism, God snatches us from the power of sin and death and brings us into new life as children of God. That's the UCAT number 226. Baptism snatches us from the power of sin and death. Now, the sacrament of reconciliation is a place where we can be reconciled again and again when we are weak and fall into sin. It truly renews our soul we get to turn a clean new page in the book of life. God is merciful, and he desires nothing more than for us to, to lay claim to his mercy. And then the anointing of the sick. This sacrament is another place where God shows his mercy and how close he is to the sick and the suffering. Now let's look at a couple ways that Jesus shows his mercy. In the Gospel today, look at how tenderly and patiently he works with doubting Thomas. Now, I can relate to St. Thomas because he was very stubborn and hard-hearted at times. I can be like that. I'm sure many of you can probably be like that from time to time. 
We celebrate today that Jesus came a week after Easter and appeared to his disciples to encourage them. And we can see from the locked doors that they were hiding and still afraid. They did not yet understand what really occurred. It is not every day that a man rises from the dead. Today, Jesus comes to encourage them. He says, peace be with you, and shows them his hands and his feet. Why? I think because it made the resurrection more real. Jesus did not fake going to the cross and then show up unscathed. Rather, his resurrected, resurrected body still bore the scars, really the holes in his hands and feet and in his side of his tremendous act of love of being nailed to the cross. Can you imagine the look of the disciples' faces when they were able to see through Jesus' hands as he held up to bless them, peace be with you? And then now Thomas was not there when Jesus came. He refused to believe what the other disciples told him. But look at Jesus' mercy with Thomas. A week later, he comes back again. And usually, you know, you've heard the axiom, seeing is believing, right? Well, not for Thomas. He needs more. So Jesus has him touch the holes in his hands, right? And put his hand into the hole in his side from the soldier's lance. And then what happened to Thomas? He totally changed. We should no longer call him doubting Thomas. We should call him believing Thomas. Because Thomas cries out, My Lord and my God. By the way, that's the prayer I say to myself when I raise the host and the chalice during the consecration. Look at the tender mercy of Jesus and his love for Thomas. Now, if we rewind a week, and we can see an even more how deep the mercy of God goes. What does Jesus say to those who are spitting on him and mocking him, those who caused him to be crucified? Does he attack them or curse them? No. His response, even on, in the agony on the cross, was to pray for them. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. On the cross, the greatest act of mercy. Look at the tender love of Jesus, even for his enemies, those who killed him. What about our mercy? Today, Divine Mercy Sunday, we should be, what should be our response to God's overwhelming mercy? Well, Jesus tells us. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, Jesus commands, be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Luke chapter 6. In fact, we pray each day in the Lord's Prayer that we should be treated with the same mercy that we show others. We say, and forgive us our trans trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We actually pray that we be treated no better than we treat others. Now, for examples... The church gives us a whole list of corporal and spiritual works of mercy. The corporal works of mercy, they take care of bodily needs. And you should remember these. To feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, shelter the homeless, clothe the naked, visit the sick, to visit the imprisoned, to bury the dead. And the spiritual works of mercy, which take care of the spiritual needs, to instruct the ignorant, counsel the doubtful, admonish sinners, to bear wrongs patiently, hmm, that's interesting, to forgive offenses willingly, to comfort the sorrowful, to pray for the living and the dead. Go back and Google these corporal works and spiritual works of mercy. And add a few to the list of the things that I can do with my ridiculous amount of free time that I now have. I want to point out one. Feed the hungry. Notice that in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the very early church lived a communal life. Each day they learned the faith, 
listen to scriptures, pray together, celebrated mass. Everyone sold all their possessions and shared their wealth in common. They made sure that everyone had their needs met. This is a great example of sharing. The opposite would be hoarding, that those with more wealth and storage take way more than they need so that others don't have enough. We have seen this a lot during the pandemic. But if we look at the world distribution of goods, we can see that a few wealthy countries hoard much of the resources of the world, and poor countries have many of their people living in poverty and hungry. This even happens in the U.S. in poorer areas. So perhaps a better way is to follow the path of mercy. Make sure that others have enough. Thank God for the work our parish does through food donations and giving other resources to the surrounding community. These are all works of mercy, imitating Jesus. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, we have meditated a little on what mercy is and how lucky we are to have a God who is abundantly merciful. May we imitate our Lord and our God by becoming people of mercy. Let us find ways this week, I know it's hard, to practice the works of mercy as we are able. Perhaps today, these acts of mercy are needed more than ever. And let the risen Christ's Easter light shine through our concrete actions of love and mercy this Easter season. Happy Easter. Alleluia. Jesus is risen.